Oi, oi, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, mostly gentlemen. Don't think any females watch this. Right. Um, I will be telling you all my bets. I will be showing you what I've struck. Uh, there are a few bets that are yet to be placed, price dependent, um, just bits and pieces. You'll see that as I talk you through this. This is a slightly different one because we're in the middle at the moment of trying to get on and get off of a particular bet. So without further ado, let's chuck ourselves into that. I think a lot's going to have changed in the market by the time that this video gets published. Um, fingers crossed and hopefully it goes my way, but we'll just have to see um, what goes on now. It's going to settle down a little bit the market, but the race that I'm talking about is the 1240 at Ascot, right? I'll take you on a little journey. So I like a horse in this race. I thought four to one plus I would bet the horse. It opened five to one. I was happy enough with that because I think it could be a lot shorter potentially. Um, so we put a bet in there, right? Now, I treated this as a little bit of a holding bet. Um, got it on my dad's account. Bet365, usually off of the cash out. Um, they've suspended the cash out on the bet, which we didn't realize now until another firm's opened up, which is Betfair. So let's just let's go through it, right? Zonda in the 1240. I will make my case for the moment. I had 50 quid each way on Bet365. I didn't mind the price. Uh, odds checker tissue was eight to one. I thought that might have been generous, but we go as we go. So just as I was getting this recorded, I was having a look at the odds checker market, see if any other bookies are priced up. And Betfair went 10 to one. So I've had a hundred pounds each way on Zonda, right? Now you guys will know what my normal stakes are. You'll probably see this as a sizable bet for me, especially considering the fact that I've got another bet that's potentially stuck on there. But I just want to let you guys know that this is not an ideal position, but something that I'm going to have to just deal with and we'll, we'll play with there. So I don't want to have £150 each way. I want to have the 100 each way at 10 to 1 and let it be. I want to try and get that money back off of the the other bet um, on Bet365, but the cash has been suspended. Whether they'll bring it back up or not, I don't know. But my position as far as this goes is I've had £100 each way, right? I know I have staked more. God, voice went funny there. I know I have to take more. Again, like I said, this is an interesting point of it, but let's just not worry about that, right? I just want to explain that obviously when I'm staking some of these bets, trying to get on early as well, sometimes you are better just to wait till the day to get the prices right. But then if there's one you want to get stuck into, let's get stuck into it. So just for the purpose of now, they've already cut it to 15 to two. It's a bit of a dodgy mark, well, not a dodgy market, but a bit of a difference of opinions, right? So if I put that there, you will see the bet freeze is five open this seven to two. Bet fair paddy power have gone 11 to eight. Now, there we go. Right. I've edited that, hopefully, so it works unblemished. But yeah, you'll, you'll see in there. So right, Betfair Ambassador, Paul Nichols is Raptor MA's trainer. I don't know whether he's given him an in or whatever. We read a lot into that stuff. There's a few differences of opinions, though, right? And a few that have shortened up off the back that they've made that Raptor MA short. Anyway, let's not worry about this, right? I've gone solely in on the focus on one horse. Rather than looking at the entire race and peeling away apart, I think there's a horse in here. Well, you obviously see which one I've got, Zonda. I think this horse is incredibly well handicapped, right? Step up in trip this time. Run twice at two miles. He's now running a three-mile novices handicap hurdle. Whether that's by design, I would imagine it must be. The fact that it must want further. Those first couple of novice hurdles, they could have obviously run it over a further trip. But again, I don't know whether did they know what they were doing with it. But anyway, the first run that it ran at Cheps over two miles looked babyish, made a bad mistake. I think would have won that race without the jumping errors. With experience, I would say that if you run against any of those horses again, it would beat them. And that is still talking about the horse at two miles. Again, the step up in trip, sire side, we've got Dinas, there's Disco, there's Agripa, there's lots of stairs on there. The mum side, maybe a two and a half, all right? But I don't see the value in a 0 to 120 race of getting this horse. He's rated 103, by the way, right? Getting this horse's mark moves about. It ain't going to happen. So anyway, long winded way, right? I feel like I need to justify it because of the stake that I put in there. Um, the, I think he would have won that race, right? And again, like if he faced those horses again, I think he would beat them. Anyway, the winner is now 118 rated. When second to impose Twire at Cheltenham and then third to go Dante. The runner-up is now 111 rated. The fourth is yet to be seen. Our guy was in between those. Fifth Panjari is 118. Second after, then won the third. Uh, sorry, one and then third to go down. He's talking about go down again. Obviously, ran in a great one, ran okay. Even the sixth, who's 20 lengths behind, is rated 107. How, how is this lad 103 rated? Seems obscene. I would say it's an absolute stonewall certainty that this horse has at least seven pounds up, up his sleeve, could potentially have up to a stone. And who knows if this step up and trips what he needed and he's done what he did at two miles, he could have like 20 pounds up his sleeves. He's only had two spins. Very, very, very unexposed. You might want to look at the second run as well because he jumped a lot better there. Fairly quiet ride. I suspect after getting beat first time up, they might have thought, well, maybe we don't need to do too much. Yes, it's a bit conspiracy theorist. Yes, it is very, very punty. So again, I've spent longer on this than I would normally talk about a selection, but it's because of the fact that I'm sharing it and I've had a sizable bet on. 
I don't know if I'm right. The market will sort of tell us. I just think from a pricing perspective that the price is wrong. Um, so I just want I just wanted to have a go on it, right? I think that um wrapped up in May for nickels is gonna be short. I just think this is under too big. Like I don't see it going off bigger than three or four to one. So I do want to get out that bet for five account or the bet. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with it after. So I've waffled far too much on that one, I guess. But again, because of the size that's in there, and I know I'm sharing this with you guys. I know, I'm not saying you're impressionable, but you will have, you'll probably want to get stuck in as well, right? Price has already tweaked. I still would. I still went in at the five to one, didn't I? But obviously, from a staking perspective, it's slightly different um, to what I've had now that I can get a bigger price. So, right, I, there's a comments in there saying, do I speak to Daryl about our bets? Because sometimes they're similar. Well, in this instance, this is a bet that I did speak to Daryl about. He's kind of put me a bit more onto it than I had. Before I'd done the race, I knew that, yeah, man was in there for Gavin Cromwell. Was a bit of an eye-catcher before falling last time, up £2. But Victorina that won the race is up £4. And if you watch the race back, would have won anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Big price for Venetia first time up was a bit of a worry, I guess, because you'd expect him to be a bit more supportive. Maybe that he surprised them, but... Um, I think this is probably by design. I think they know that they got well off that mark. They know they've got another handicap in them. Um, didn't jump that great, but got away with it. And that's at Ascot. So I, I think this one was an okay bet. You'll see again from the staky stuff. I've had a, a half a point each way, so it's twenty five pound will be my normal a bit. Then the six to one's fair. I don't see there'll be too many in front of this horse. Um, another one that I have bet is Lucia. Now we do love Lucia. Um, I was tempted to have a little bit more on, but I don't know whether that's more like heart overhead but she's 136 rated right Virico lord's given her eight pounds now compared to what he gave her in the great wood so eight pounds worse off she was beating seven lengths sonagina was a couple of lengths behind yes it was a poor race Aintree that he went a while and yes it was stepping up in trip but he's six pounds higher now she beat him admittedly over two miles now go danty was in behind he's obviously gone on and won there is a record in this race right winners tritonic mohayed and brain power they're recent winners of this have won have run in the Great Wood, not one, but run down the field, maybe like third to eighth or something, and then come and won this race. Winners of the Great Wood haven't got the best record going into here. So Lucia is better than 136 of that, I'm sure. There will not be four horses in front of her. It's each way first four. Um, I don't think the 10 to one's still about. I think she's nine to one now, but she's well worth a bet. You can see from my stake in there, right? I was contemplating having 25 each way on her because I do like her. This could be a good opportunity, but it's a competitive enough race. Um, I'll sit where I sit. We'll, we'll leave it as that. A couple of other bets that will be going on that I haven't put up yet. Um, you're all going to hate me, but I'm going to bet Goshen. I'm going to have a small stake each way. So I'll have like 6.25 each way. I think he's about 50. I'll wait till tomorrow um, and, and see about places and all that sort of stuff. I'm also going to have a loose bet on Scandiberg in the last play, uh, place at Haydock. Again, stupid bet. You'll probably annoy, get annoyed with me saying this, but I just want to tell you what I'm betting. So I want to get 25s or 33s. Again, I'll have a small bet each way. There would be eight, well, three places up for grabs, I think, extended places, bet 365. So I'd be happy enough with that. Um... I think that wraps up what I'd be doing, to be honest with you. Let me just double check to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything because I've got a little bit excited there and I. Um, yeah, that's the lot. So, yeah, we've got a couple of races to get excited about. So in terms of total state, let's just redo that. So I've had 200 on the, the big dog, Zonda. Um, we've had 25 on Lucia, 25 on Victorino. So that is 250 state. And then, like I said, I'll have a couple of those. Six pound twenty-five each way, so it will be what? So I say two fifty. Did I say two hundred and seventy-five? Is I guess where we're sat um, with the staking. So yeah, that's where we are. I will just say with the the bet fair exchange holder where I've backed Lucia, Nemean Lion ticks a few boxes in terms of the coming in as the Great Wood, and I did like that horse for the Great Wood as well. Off the same mark again, I think one forty. I do think that's got a bit of a chance. So look, what do we say? Two seventy-five on stake, right? I'll have twelve fifty on. Um, the me and line on the exchange, probably with a view to lay the stake out, um, probably for 14, 16, or something like that. So I'll have that as well. So let's just, we'll add that in. We'll say that I've bet me and lion again. You could probably look to bet the horse each way, didn't hurdle that great at Cheltenham, could be okay. But for, for the purpose of what I'm doing, I'll have 12.50 on and I'll look to lay in run. If you want to bet it each way, I'll do whatever, do what you will. But so that puts us up to 287.50 going out this Saturday. A lot of pressure on Zonda, right? Look, go well. Enjoy your Christmas. Please don't get overly excited just because I've put a bit more on a horse. Yes, maybe I'm right, but yes, maybe I'm wrong. It's had two runs. It's 103 rated. I talk about my snobbage level of the 135. I don't really scrape around in this barrel too often. I do tend to do okay, but with variance and just the way the world goes, even I'm saying it's about maybe three, four to one poke. I think that because that's how they should price it. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy tying money up there because I can't imagine he's going to be a big, bad drifter. It could happen, though. You may be in a position to not get out of your bet. 
I could put myself in a position now where I could do something different with it. I'm not recommending it for that sake. This isn't like a potential bet to lay stuff. I'm taking a bit of a swing on this one and it is very punty as well, right? So I'll be back um, with Jamie. We're going to preview the Boxing Day and the 27th stuff. We're going to do that on the 24th, so Christmas Eve. I'll get a video out for that. Go well, be lucky. Drop a comment if you want to say anything nice Christmas Eve wise. Make sure you've liked the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and please do gamble responsibly, all right? Like I say, I know I'm getting potentially stuck into one here. It is a punty one, right? But I just wanted to let you guys know. And obviously the price has already started to collapse. So it's a different beast. So again, from my staking perspective, if you wanted to look at it, I was happy to have £50 each way uh, when it was five to one. That was the sort of realms that it's going to go to. So as much as I've had more on than you would think, if you're following my point system, I wouldn't be having as much on now if I could only get the 13 to two or seven to one that it is. If you see what I mean? So bet responsibly, trust your own judgment and be lucky.